Um, I almost got into an accident getting here. My car died on the freeway, and it's been sputtering to get here on time. So you have my most profound apologies for the delay, and I beg your indulgence. Thank you. We're good to go. Yes. Thank you, John. <laughs> good afternoon. I wish to call this meeting to order. Let the record show that we are starting at 2.47 p.m. Uh, we now have a quorum of the Education Committee. We hope all have picked up an agenda. And the first is the introduction of committee members. To my left sits. John Vertito. I am the nursing board educator. And I am Bernice Basti Martinez. I'm a public member of the board and also the vice president of the board. Staff, will you please introduce the staff? I am, Sh I am Cheryl Anderson. I'm the supervising nursing education consultant. And I have three consultants here today. Jessica Gomez, most of you know. S Faye Silverman and Beth DeYoung. Beth and Faye are uh, based out of their homes in Southern California, so if you don't see them typically here, you, you can, you, they're ours, believe me, and we're glad to have them. Um, excuse me, I noticed we are missing legal today. We are. Legal uh, notified me this morning that they would be unable to attend uh, this afternoon. They have reviewed and approved the agenda, and they have reviewed each item, agenda item, so they are aware of what's going on. Thank you very much. And now, introduction of approved schools represented here. And if you're here, you can either stand or you can wave at us or do both. <laughs> Unitech College. <laughs> TTI, Medical Allied Career Center, and also we have uh, the Medical School of Nursing, Advanced Medical School of Nursing, my apologies, names are important. Okay. Are there any other schools that we might not know about. I don't want to ignore anyone. Or if anyone else wishes to introduce themselves. Thank you. We want to move on to the agenda and we want to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. We wanted to give John just a moment to catch his breath. And if you will lead us please in the pledge, everyone stand. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, John. Thank you. I just want to remind everyone of the role of the Education Committee. This committee is charged with gathering public input and making recommendations to the board for actions relative to the safe and competent work of vocational nurses and psychiatric technicians. We, again, make recommendations to the full board. First, on our agenda, consideration of possible action to make recommendations regarding program placement on provincial approval. We're going to start with Advanced Medical School of Nursing, Pittsburgh, and uh, just for our nursing education consultants, the sub these committee members, we have all read the reports, and so as you uh, begin your comments, you can summarize and highlight important details. 
All right. Um, Advanced Medical School of Nursing is brought to the committee. Um, they're on pre-approval and due to some irregularities or issues that were identified, such as reports not being turned in, a lack of communication with the director, we did an unannounced site visit on April 11th and 12th. During that time, we found 15 violations. Now, this school has not had any students graduate at this time. They have a total of 15 students who are currently taking the program. So, the violations that we identified were, the first one is that re board reports that were required uh, were not submitted, and uh, they have since given me the report, but until they show a consistency of turning in reports on time, it's not considered to be uh, corrected. The next violation is that the school needs to notify us of within 10 days of any uh, termination of faculty. There were three faculty that we identified that have been terminated that we did not get this information for. Uh, the third violation is the active administration of the director. And during this time, what, well, when I spoke with her on the telephone, she told me that she is only at the program a few hours now and then. And that when I asked her who is actively administering the program, she said no one. And so, uh, and, and then with the identification of the 15 violations, is verify that she is definitely not. Uh, and the next violation is adequate resources. And when we looked at the resources that they have, uh, they had a toilet that's not working. They, uh, the, there was a sign on it for the students, this toilet that we were told that we could use. There was no toilet paper. There was no um, hand soap. There was no tissues. And the door was kind of Kiliwonkus on the wall so that it off hinges, Caca. Caca. <laughs> sorry, um, off the hinges and the door wouldn't really close for us. So we felt very uncomfortable using the restroom even while we were there and thought about how the students would feel. The library had absolutely no books in the library. The only thing that was on the shelves for the library were VHS um, videos. Um, there were there was a few computers in a computer lab. The resources for medication administration in the skills lab was just one small tray with a few items that were on it. So there, the resources were just really not there. In the faculty office for them to use to, for preparation for class, there was a desk and a chair, but there was no computer, there was no telephone, there was really nothing for the faculty to use. So the resources for the students and their faculty was not really available. Uh, there was no evidence of faculty um, meetings being held, and we, we saw absolutely no documents that any had been held. In questioning and asking in the interviews, we found out that the program had been very diligent in having administrative meetings with uh, for the program, but there was none with the uh, director with any faculty members. Uh, their lesson plans, they could not provide me with a copy of lesson plans. There were, um, uh, let's see, high school, the program, the students need to have in their files evidence of the completion of high school. There was no evidence of completion of high school. Looking at their attendance records, we saw some students with 117 hours of missed hours that had not been made up. When we talked with the students, they told us that they did, were unaware that they needed to make up any hours. Um, there was no evidence that the students are evaluated during the school program. The students had, they could not supply us with even a skills checkoff list. The students were in term three, and so they had never had a skills checkoff list uh, that they had done skills. 
um, we could not find any remediation or tutoring of any of the students. Uh, the curriculum hours for the school was not being followed. The school was uh, taking days off, and, and in the attendance sheets we would see um, canceled by administration for days throughout. The day that we got there, they were supposed to, according to the information I had received, be having a, a theory class. That class had been canceled. And uh, I come to find out that on the two theory days on Mondays and Tuesdays that they were supposed to be having were now held in one 12-hour day on Saturday. So here again, they're missing four hours every week of curriculum hours. Um, let's see. Uh, the clinical faculty, when I talked with the clinical faculty member, she was unaware that uh, what term the students were in. She didn't know whether they were in term two or term three. Um, so this was of concern. They had done no clinical facility evaluations. Uh, st students um, were unable to pass medications at the facility that they were at, uh, and they're in term three now. They, they had just gotten permission the week prior for students to start passing medications in term three. The students had only been in one facility through the whole time that they had been at the at the school, and so they had not had the opportunity in, up until term, middle of term three of passing medications. Um, there have been no clinical site evaluations completed by the school, the students, or the faculty. Um, they have not been offering credit granting to the CNA students, and I think that's all of my violations that I found. So that's 15 of them. So it, it was of great concern. And that's why I brought them to the board. Thank you. Colleague, do you have questions? For um, the NEC? Um, Jessica, I just wanted to, just for the record. Um, when the direct, the approved director had gone through the briefing that we hold, hold uh, with either telephone or in face, and they've gone through the training, online training, and you had an opportunity, to, she had an opportunity to ask questions, ask for clarifications before they began. Just to confirm that is correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. No other questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. And you did mention, this is a question to you, that you've received some documentation of some type of changes. Only the, only the one form that I got, uh, uh, and it was the NCLEX review of the curriculum. I've received that since, but that's the only change. Or, or I just wanted to be clear that there was nothing else in response to the violations. No, he, we had the school come up and talk with us uh, last week, and they did attend. They were given the violations at that time, and, the, and they are under the understanding that they do need to make the corrections. Is there a representative from Advanced Medical School of Nursing who would like to talk with us? Yes. Please approach. Identify name and title, please, if you wish. Uh, my name is Dr. Ike Maneko, and I'm the administrator. Uh, Melissa Gove, and I was the consultant who uh, wrote the program with Cheryl Anderson's help and approval, and have been asked to come back in um, when these items were found. Okay, uh, thank you so very much, the, um, Ms. Gomez, for your input, and uh, thanks board for giving us the chance to come here and uh, discuss this with you. This is a situation that I, I've really worked hard, tried my best to not be
called upon to talk to you in this fashion, but unfortunately, it happened. And now, going forward, is what can we do to keep that, this from happening anymore? And I know that, given the chance, we can get things corrected and bring it back um, in line to what the reg says. The report, in, in most part, the report is accurate. There are just a few misunderstandings that I would like to correct. Maybe if through the communication and things that were not um, fully explained to the NEC and thereby getting it not quite accurate in the report. Um, some documentation that she couldn't find, that is true, she couldn't find those documentations. We did find them. When she asked for them, I couldn't find them. At that point, we did find them. I don't know if this is a good time to present it to the board or give it to her later. What is the process? Do we make copies of those documents? While we might receive those documents until they're actually logged in and reviewed by the consultants, it's just that you're notifying us that you are submitting additional paperwork. Okay. So should we submit it now and then? Or? Uh, any, see, would you like to receive that now or I'll by the appropriate it. method? This would be original. To have it delivered hmm? to you at, in your office? You should be able to receive it now. I can receive it now. Okay, thank you. I don't you. have a problem with that. So, uh, Jessica, those are the originals. He may want to make copies. We may want him to make copies. Okay, if these are the originals, no, no. make copies and send them to me. They're photocopies. These are copies. Oh, okay. Excuse, excuse me, Doug. Why don't you complete your comments first, and then we can transition to the documents. Okay. So, um, like I said, most of the observation, like the observation about the toilet, uh, obviously, that is not appropriate at all for a school not to have a functioning toilet. But when she asked me what, because our main toilet was broken, it was being fixed, and I told her that, and we have a sign like shit, which was accurate. And I told her that the toilet was in the conference room, the other toilet they were using was in the conference room. I think you mis she misunderstood me, because that we do have another functioning well-functioning and nice toilet for the students to use. And I put a copy of that. Didn't see it. Okay. okay. Yeah, there's a copy of that. Okay. That's what I'm saying is misunderstand because when you came in, I said there was a, the first door to your right, left. So I took the picture so that you can remember you went to that room. I actually took a picture. The other, the second conference room, you took a picture of it. I did not realize there was a toilet in there. Okay. Well. I did say that, but again, like I said, it didn't catch that. So, I, of course, I know that uh, it's miscommunication on that. And then, so I got a picture to, for that. And um, there are also some attend the missing attendance records. We did find those records, most of them, not all of them. And they are in the copies that I'm going to be giving to you. So, now, the class time being moved to Saturday, some of the class time being moved to Saturday, then I will take full responsibility for that. When I met with Ms. Gomez uh, sometime in February, I believe, February? March. March, okay. Melissa had made it clear for me to talk to her and give her three, tell her what is going on and give her three options on how we're going to handle it. And one of the options she gave to me was um, a 12-hour class, a WebS if possible, because of the issue we, we have with instructors. But frankly, I thought that I discussed those with Ms. Gomez, but I did not. I found out when the question started coming that I did not. I take full responsibility for that. We, we, it was not an intention to deceive the board on what is going on now. She had wrote it out for me, clearly what needs to be discussed, and uh, get approval for, to do that. But I just omitted to forgot to discuss that with her. It was not intentional. And every of my communication with her was based on the fact that I thought I did the discussion. Even when she called to ask me what, when uh, clinicals and theory classes are being held, 
I told her our regular schedule Monday and Mondays are Tuesdays for theory and then Wednesday through Friday for clinical. And that has always been our regular schedule. Now on that week, that particular week, uh, we were supposed to have some, but that week, um, Melissa can confirm that, we haven't discussed that, but she can confirm that. That is the week we were supposed to go back to our regular schedule. And unfortunately, the person that we were going to bring on board to send her information to Ms. Gomez, hoping to get a quick turnaround, canceled the last minute. So we went back. That, week, that weekend, we were not supposed to have any weekend classes that weekend. So again, that is why the reporting did not agree with what we told her initially, because if we had gone back to our regular schedule, then that week she would have seen us, seen the students being, seen us going back to our regular schedule that week. Um, Okay, and according to the diplomas, we did not admit anyone, anyone without their complete information, like diploma transcript, medical records, and so on and so forth. Uh, we do have during admission, or we did have during admission all that information before this, any student came on board. Unfortunately, when they asked for them, I wasn't able to provide all those records at that time. We did go back and find most of them, and they are in what we're going to be turning it over to her. Okay. So it's not like we admitted students without the required information, no. All the students were checked, all the, I mean all their records were checked off and make sure that they had everything before they came into the program. You know, with myself being somebody who knows, who's seen what's happened to other schools, fortunately, again, I'm taking responsibility, I did not supervise the program as much as I should have. I'm making sure that things are done when they are due and when they're supposed to be done. So that I take the full responsibility. But as far as the admission records, they were all turned in to the school before the students were admitted. I think that's all I have. The only other additional information I Please do have. Please talk directly into the mic, if you will. Oh, thank you. Um, the only additional information, Jessica, um, I did have the students fill out the clinical evaluations for term one and two, but they need to be signed by the director of nursing. Excuse me. Can you direct, uh, and no problem, can you direct your comments oh, to, yes. to the committee members? <clears throat> yes, so I did have the students fill out the student clinical facility forms this, um, last weekend when they had class, but they still need to be signed by the director of nursing. But we did have them completed. Are these the evaluation forms? Is uh -huh. that what you're talking yes, okay. for both terms one and two. And, um, and just want to make sure we're clear. Um, this is the first time the students have completed these records, or is this a replacement of records that could not be found? I found no indication, and after speaking with the students and no paperwork, that they were ever given this. So I went ahead and did it when I was there on Saturday. Thank you. And one more thing, please. The library, um, we did have a sign that says to the student that please see the staff for required test book. So we, I've also brought a list of all the test books we have. We have tons of test books for the students to use. They were not there when they came, but we did have a sign that says, please see the staff for the test book. So I've also brought a list of the test books for her. Comments from Thank colleagues, you. members? <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Doctor, um, yes. we've worked together a long time. I, I know, know you've been 
you waited for very patiently to open your school. You waited during the moratorium, and you've been you were anxious to get this started. Um, looking at this report, 15 violations after you worked so hard to get started, what happened? That is a very good question, and there is no good answer that will come from me, and this is for one reason, is that I know I could, do, I could have done better. Knowing what I know, working with you and being at all the board meetings, I should have paid more att closer attention to what is going on. But I thought that I had people who were, were capable of doing those things. Because it was, I was so embarrassed when I was asked for the attendance sheets, and I couldn't find all the attendance sheets. It was just, I mean, it's not acceptable. So that's why I said there's really no good answer, no answer that I can give that would be good enough. Because I know to him who more is given is more as expected. And uh, I should have done better. Well, you know, I know you've attended meetings, numerous meetings for more than a decade. Um, that you've been, you, we've talked, you know, during the, during the breaks and um, you were so anxious to get your school started and then finding out once you got your school started less than a year later We had all we were having all these issues is dismaying um, for example when the um, When the NECs come visit your school, there's no proof of 12th grade education and you know that's one of the key requirements for enrollment and you should have had it right there, full packet on a folder or file on every student, and everything should have been in there. And right. you know that other schools, because I know you've sat in on them, on the board meetings, schools, other schools have gotten in trouble for the same thing. And sure. knowing how sincere you were in wanting to get your school started, it, again, it's dismaying that not only the problem, um, not only all these issues have come up, but um, that they've gone on without your notice for a prolonged period of time, again, is troubling. Um, are you aware what the NEC recommendation is for your school? Am I aware what it is? The, yes. Yes. Do you have any problem with probation status? If we can be given the chance to correct this without going into probation, we highly appreciate that because I do know that this uh, violations are a result of negligence on my part, of not catching them ahead of time. It's not that the school does not want to do these things or does not intend to do them. It's just that the supervision for me to have caught all these things. And I would like to add, like the proof of 12K education, before the, I know that I've seen all those documents because they gave them to me initially, so it's the filing process, that is between the filing process and after the time that I signed it, what happened to some of those records. And we were able to pull most of them, find most of them as when she goes through. So it's not that we didn't have them when the students started, we did. So nobody was admitted without the appropriate documentation. I understand that you, what you said, that you checked them. The hard part is, is that when we checked, when we checked mm -hmm. in, the, in the body of our NECs, it wasn't there. And whether it's an internal mechanism that you're going to correct, when we came to visit, simply put, it just wasn't there. True. And we can't. We can only go by the um, what what the NECs see and report back to us for um, for an evaluation. The purpose of probation is not to punish the school, but it is to get your chance, uh, the chance to get your school back in order. And it is only for one year, but it's a chance to make the correction because that is how we apply the, I won't say discipline, but the sufficient <coughs> notice that you have to get your house in order, or in this case, your school in order. And 15 violations is not something that we can we can't just ignore or we can't just um, address simultaneously because you're submitting the paperwork now instead of when it was asked for. 
Right. And that's, again, that's another issue. Further, having a board-approved director failing to administer the program with your knowledge and then shorting, changing the class schedule without notifying the board and then changing the schedule and shorting the stated curriculum that you got approved by four hours a week is inappropriate, especially without board notice. Um, again, is, is, is rather troubling because we need to make sure that you are meeting your stated goals, curriculum, ob and objectives, and by your, by your own nature, by the evaluation, you're not. And so, again, that's something that we do have to consider. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, as we listen to uh, your comments, and also reflecting on the violations, there seem to be some systemic concerns. Um, finding and locating multiple types of documents. Um, consistency with notification to the board around multiple instances and changes. I'm curious, and maybe you can help me better understand. Obviously, one can't be present at all times. Is there possibly a need for additional staffing or support in your unique circumstance? Um. Yes, and I will uh, qualify that word, yes. Um, we do have enough support staff. What I do believe that we lacked was a DON that would have foreseen administered the program as required. And that's why I said yes. As far as support staff to fire things, make copies, do other, we have enough of that. Now, for the record, I would like to reflect, say, though, that Deborah O'Neill, our DON, did live in, in general, uh, no, in, the, in November, and then came back on, came back in March, February, March, okay? So m between that time, we did hire somebody new, and uh, it didn't work out. And then she ended up her so between that <coughs> November to February March. So what I do need, you're right, what I do need as far as staffing is getting a deal in that is gonna be able to roll up as so to say and uh, get busy and get the job done without my having to uh, micromanage. Another question. The program is there to serve students. Correct. How were students notified about changes and how are they kept updated about circumstances? Are they aware of the potential of the change in approval status of their institution? Not yet, because the change, the approval status has not yet changed. So as of now, not yet. I met with the students on Monday. You know, we just, I go in during the clinical some other times. We just sat, listened to some of the issues, some of the comments, and I've been doing that more often since uh, Ms. Kame came. So, but I've not told them officially the possibility of the uh, this school status being changed because it hasn't happened. And one last question related to the students. Uh, it's my understanding from reading the report and then also listening to our NEC that students appear not to be aware they needed to make up time. Um, that is uh, troubling, uh, especially when 
we know once they graduate and if they become licensed, it is imperative that the, for the safety of the public that they have adequate hours and experiences so that they can do a good job. True, I understand. And I was surprised when they told uh, the NEC that they did not know. The students knew. When uh, Indira, the other lady I was talking about, came in, she was, her own method of teaching was, number one, let's get the discipline in first. So we've always told the student, they knew that they have to make up the hours. I was surprised they said they didn't know. I, I, I know, we've, I've personally told them, and Indira told them that many times. So you cannot come to school, you can't just drag your feet anytime you want. And I've had most, some of them will call me, Dr. Ike, I'm not gonna be in, and so, so, and so. I said, no, you don't call me, you call your DON because your DON is there that knows what is going on, not me. And they will try to go over the DON or go over the staff to come to me. And I always send them back to the DON. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, staff, yes, please. I, I just have a couple of questions, Dr. Ike and, mm -hmm. and Ms. Scope. First of all, where is the director today? She said that she couldn't make it. And I intend to talk to the NEC about that. The, when the consultants were there, the director, are, they were are prior to that time, the director advised them that she was only there two or three hours <coughs> periodically. So who's been administering the program? And, and I, I say that not, and I, not to belittle your involvement, but you are the administrator. True. And, and as as the consultants have said, and as we've discussed previously, and, and you know we discussed that before the program was approved, um, California Code of Regulations does require the program to be actively administered by a director, and that certainly can't be accomplished within two hours periodically. That may account for a lot of the problems that that have been identified. Um, so that, to me, seems to be one major problem that has to be resolved to get anything done. Um, the other issue in changing the schedule of, of the classes, and in so doing, four hours of scheduled content that's in your approved curriculum are not, were not covered. Is there a plan? for when, when that will occur. And, and just, so that, that's, a, that's a critical issue that has to be addressed. This class began when? And this is the initial class that we're talking about. Right. Okay, it, so the initial class began when? August 29th, 2016. It, yeah, August 29th, 29, 16. And they're yes. they were scheduled according to the approved curriculum. They should have been able to graduate when? Around the middle of September. Of which year? 2017. Clearly, given the current situation, they will not have completed the approved curriculum by then, right? We need to go back through and see what hours were done, and the current um, status is that we're doing what we can on the Saturday, the eight hours now that has been changed. And, um, but all the hours were covered. They were, were behind a little bit. Yeah, yeah. we are behind. You're yeah. behind. You're, yeah. We need to get them caught uh, up. You're behind in that it, it ha you haven't followed the approved instructional right. plan. Mm -hmm. So it's more than just putting in the hours. It's also following the the, the schedule. Progression. Yeah, we need to get a full-time people in there to teach Monday through Friday, and any additional um, education needs to be done and caught up and redone if it needs to be redone. Well, May I? Yes. yes. Okay. The other, my other concern was, how can the students do this if the faculty doesn't know mm -hmm. where the students are in the program, what skills they're supposed to accomplish, and be able to perform as needed? Um, 
what level should they at critical thinking at this point? Um, I don't know about their ability to do the critical thinking necessary to develop a care plan or plan of care to identify patient uh, nursing diagnoses. Um, because without coherent faculty, administration, faculty to the students, it sounds like your program is in complete disarray. No lesson plans, um, no faculty meetings to coordinate between theory and clinical, and not having a list of skills so the students don't know what they're supposed to accomplish. I have some grave concerns, doctor, and this is, um, you're, we're supposed to be producing safe, competent, um, licensed um, vocational nurses, and you can't tell me the status of your patients or your students other than they started in September, they're supposed to be progressing, but you have faculty who don't even know what, clin uh, what term they're in or what they're supposed to be capable, capable of performing. Well, in addition to that, these were, when they were the, the consultants were there, we're talking about term three students in the middle of term three, and they were just being allowed to administer medications. That's problematic. That's so, not progressive mastery, and it's not consistent with your approved curriculum. Right. And so the question about staffing still stands at all levels, at all types. And it, it's a question about not only being present in name on a list, but the competency of the staff, and I'm also talking about faculty, and their active engagement in the work that they are supposed to be doing in relationship to making the program work. In most schools, before students are allowed to deal with a patient, they have to go through the theory, practice skills of the lab, then perform with live patients under nursing um, instructor supervision. And looking at the report, you really don't, it doesn't look like you have enough supplies to be able to perform those higher level patient tasks, wound care, uh, intubation, colostomy care, et cetera. So how do, you, how do you do the progression from basic ADLs in term one to the more system related complications, uh, bandaging, fractures, tube feedings, catheterizations, without the equipment available to perform the task in laboratory before they go to clinical? That's a very good question. And um, again, um, not again, we did, Melissa did take the time to order all the supplies that we need, we, you know, we're supposed to have. Unfortunately, the DOM we had at that time said that we didn't know, need all these things and had them, most of them returned. So I had to go by what she told me that we didn't need the supplies. So, and uh, she did order them, and they were delivered, and most of them were returned. She took what it said she needed, and the rest was returned. We are so returned. after the NEC visit or before you opened the school? No, before the, N before the NEC vi visited. You ordered the supplies She before. did, mm -hmm. yes. Because yeah. okay. I'm aware that... Too. We used to have schools required to get all the stuff before they opened the doors, and that's a big outlay of, of financial resources with nothing coming in. Mm -hmm. So we allowed that fluctuation. So that's, what, that's the source of the question. Yeah. Okay. But we have another example of proficiency, knowledgeable staff, uh, regardless of the title. If something's ordered, and if we're hearing you correctly, someone said, send something back, or it's not there for some other reason. Another big concern related to students, if by chance there are any CN, CNA students in your program, we really have to have records of how they're credited. And that is a violation as well. In other words, they became CNAs because they did some kind of study. 
and do they get credit for having that particular license? And how is it dealt with in your program? And of course, we, you can't answer all of that here. The real purpose here is to make sure for the record and for our understanding that with 15 violations, that there wasn't some misrepresentation or misinterpretation of what was seen. Uh, we really do value what the staff brings to us as a result of a visit. But we also want to give a school an opportunity to say maybe that wasn't what was seen. At this point, is there anything else that you want to say to us? And then we need to decide what kind of recommendation we'll be making to the board. Um, I would like to state that um, after the visit, he was able to locate, and I think we notified you, um, of the skills labs that were checked off by one of the nurse practitioner who was substituting in clinical. Uh, I do know um, for a fact that nurse practitioner was shown and um, given lesson plans. There's lesson plans for all the classes. She did not have one for clinical. I did want to clarify that. But the lab skills are incomplete. They were only signed to a certain period. Thank you. But there was an attempt. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank may you. I, may yes. I have another question. Mm -hmm. What's your plan for where you go? The current director that you have is not is appears not to be functioning satisfactorily. Is that correct? That is correct. So, do you have plans for what you're going to do? How you're going to administer the program? Yeah. Ms. I, I know Ms. Gulf worked to get your program started, but as I understand, you're not able to resume the position of, of director for the program. Is that correct? Not currently. <coughs> okay, so right now we've got a situation where we have students out there with no no director. In addition to the fact that based on, on the, the information we have, there were at least four months that something was, there was no director and we had students there and something was happening in terms of the classroom. Mm -hmm. So we need to know what's what you plan? I mean, you certainly need one. Oh, well, definitely. Um, we have been advertising a lot, <coughs> getting resumes, and uh, unfortunately, we just haven't found the right person. But ever since uh, we have been advertising, ever since Indira left up till now, we did send a resume to, not, not, we did send some information to Ms. Gomez um, either yesterday or so about somebody we found that is gonna take over the directorship. And uh, she did ask for additional information, so we're working on that. Yeah, but we do have somebody that is gonna be coming on board very soon. And the assumption would be that person will be appropriately trained, oriented, and monitored or assessed and evaluated? That is correct. Melissa has done a wonderful job in training anybody that comes in. She has these nice binders that she goes through with all the faculty members, the directors, and she spends a lot of time, hours, training them. So the training for sure is definitely going to be taken care of. Now the, the monitoring, the supervision, and that is where I come in. It's not going to be do this anymore and assume that it's going to be done. I'm going to do better at making sure that those things are done. In regards to the students, though, that are going to, they're scheduled to graduate, how are we going to be able to evaluate skills competency and make sure that they're appropriately prepared for the NCLEX? If they're going to graduate in September, that's what, five months, roughly about five months away, and you, they haven't had the, the equipment in the skills lab to be able to do those advanced uh, medical surgical task related to that level of care, how um, do you have a plan in place to be able to retroactively get their skills back up into care, like trait care, chest tubes, respiratory, cardiac, 
GI, GU, um, those skills, will they be able to be retroactively trained on the appropriate level of skills for a term three nurse, nursing student? Yeah, yes, they will. And my goal, what I envision is once the DON comes in, is to go through these reports that we have and then talk to the students to find out exactly what is lacking because initially I will ask where are the students, the answer that I will get is that we, we, we are on, on track, that everything is okay. But now after the visit I found out that everything is not okay. So that is my first task is once the DON comes in is to talk to the student, go through the um, survey results, the site visit results, find out what it is that the students are missing and then map out a plan to address them, get them brought up to date. Whatever we need to do, if we have, we hold classes when and as is necessary, we're gonna work with our, our Ms. Gomez to make sure that they're done the right time. Can we assume or do we, well let me just say, when you say you're going to talk with the students, does that mean assess their skills, evaluate their skills, because not necessarily will a student know she or he doesn't know something if it has not been presented. That is true. And that is where Melissa as a consultant will come in too because that's not my area of expertise. Yes, you are right. We're going to not just talk to them, evaluate them, and find out what they are missing and bring them up to them. We will be looking for elements of all of this in terms of the documentation that you would deliver to staff. Certainly. And I would like to add that Ms. Anderson was really 100% correct. Uh, the problem lies with not having a DON that is going to monitor what is going on. I think that is a major problem. And that is where I'm focusing my effort to find the right person and once we have a right DON in place, all this can be, will be cleaned up right away. Please understand that in the meantime, there, you have a class of 15 students, and what would be the obligation and commitment to those students in the interim? How will they be worked with? How will they be able to continue or Actually, there probably needs to be remediation yes. in terms of advancing to completion of the program. And of course, we can't answer that right now, but we do look forward to seeing uh, what your plan will be. So, one last question, Dr. Ford. Um, in regards to my colleagues' comments, um, do you foresee any challenges in providing the students the materials necessary for skills competency. Because um, they will go through a lot of material to get themselves back up to um, the level they should, or get themselves to the level. I mean, equipment, mannequins, um, supplies to practice wound care, sterile procedure, etc. Um, and have those high fidelity mannequins that are capable of simulating or being able to work on those higher skill, le skill levels. Are there any challenges you foresee in providing the students with that level of equipment necessary to perform those tasks? No, there are no challenges. M Melissa has given me uh, ideas already, different ways to procure those, so we can get them. We'll look forward to seeing that in your submissions with documentation of evidence. Sure. Okay. We do know that uh, many of the um, advanced skills were done by the, Ms. Um, Sharma, who was not approved by the board, and they need to be all reassessed because they were not documented, nor were they approved. Thank you. Thank you. As we prepare to take action in terms of recommendations, is there public comment? If so, please approach. Seeing none, a colleague, do you have a recommendation or a motion? 
I would like to, Madam Chair, I'd like to present a motion to accept the NEC recommendation um, to place Advanced Medical School of Nursing Pittsburgh Vocational Nursing Program on provisional approval based on its pre-approval status for a one-year period starting May 12, 2017 through May 31st, 2018 and issue the certificate accordingly. Now second that, and uh, just for clarification, this will be our recommendation to the full board for the board's action. Yes. Hearing no other comments, because we've had our discussion, um, we need a vote. Um, aye. And aye. Doctor, I do wish you success. I know you worked long and hard to get this started, but I do really hope you get your ship back in order and back on course. I promise you I will. And uh, thank you so very much. I really appreciate that. And uh, like I said initially to him, who more is given is more expected. I, I'm supposed to do better than I, I've done so far. And going forward, I will do better. Thank you. Right. Good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Our next agenda item is Institute Vocational Nursing Program. We have representatives in the room. And we did receive notice earlier, but just in case they came, that they would not be with us. They did send a written document. Before we get to that, We'd like to hear from the nursing education consultant. And both of us <coughs> have read the report. OK. So in summary, the Angeles Institute Vocational Nursing Program is presented to the Education Committee for consideration of placement of, on provisional approval due to noncompliance with the regulatory requirements. The program's annual average pass rates are below 10 percentage points of the state average pass rates for nine consecutive quarters. Provisional approval is recommended. Um, in addition, the program also requests to admit a full-time class of 45 students commencing on July 17, 2017, to replace the graduating class of July 2017. Denial of this class request is re recommended. Um, since November 2014, the program has implemented interventions to increase their NCLEX pass rates. But based on the most recent nine quarters of the NCLEX um, examination data, those interventions appear to be ineffective. Denial of the July 2017 class will allow the program to focus on current student enrollment and make any necessary changes to improve their NCLEX pass rates. Um, as you stated, the program director submitted a written statement um, but of importance is on the written statement, she requests approval for the class um, to implement her revised curriculum. But uh, the revised curriculum has not been approved yet. So last week, April 21st, 2017, the program dir director submitted the final version of the curriculum revision, in addition, multiple policy changes. But at this time, like I stated, neither have been approved by the board yet. Thank you. I Thank you, Madam Chair. I just read the report, or actually the reply back from the Director of Nurses, and I find it troubling or um, of concern, especially since they're not here, so we can't question them. Your report is um, thorough, and I appreciate it. But if you take a look at their letter, and I think paragraph two, students' lack of interest or need to work. Um, and they're paying for this? This is a private school, correct? You're correct. OK, and so is the expectation, reading between the lines, 
the students pay their money and expect to pass the class without doing the work? Is this kind of what I'm reading here in her? I, I can't really answer for that, but one of the assumptions that I have actually made to the director is um, you can't you can't expect to learn the program at the end. So, you know, the NCLEX is very important, but I, my concern was what are they gaining throughout the program? If, you know, if they're having such a lack at the end, there's possibly something within their program that they need to evaluate as well. It's like somebody cramming for mm -hmm. finals right. in college. Right. Um, it's, it's, I just find it troubling that this would be in here. Um, that they're paying tuition to a private school and then not wanting to study. And so, and then, you know, what do we do for motivation since they, they're literally putting money where their mouth is to be able to go to the school and then not making the effort. So, just want to make note of, of that in her reply since she's not here to question. All, I'm, all I have is this for her to go by and then your input on your interpretation of there have been multiple interventions, as you can see, mm -hmm. but it's been over a, sp a span of two years. So my concern, and I kept explaining that, that, um, you know, have we evaluated each intervention to make sure that they're effective, which ones are effective, which ones are not? And I wasn't, it wasn't very clear about the um, evaluations of her, all of the interventions they've put into the program for the last two years. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. In relationship to what we were just saying about the students, do you have any other observations <coughs> about the students that you might share with us? Um, I, I haven't actually talked to the students or observed the students, but just from the information from the director, um, one of the things that I've noticed is they are at the uh, minimum required uh, clinical instructors if, if they were to have the class approved at 129 students, they would require nine clinical um, instructors for clinical supervision and that is what they currently have designated for clinical supervision. So that was also a concern because this has been ongoing, the four classes that they previously have. And I did mention that about, you know, having instructors with a full load and not having the extra staff to possibly, you know, in, uh, the, look at the interventions, evaluate, you know. And so that was a concern that she said she did notice and she was going to look into. And then especially if she's going to be implementing a new revised curriculum if it gets approved by the board, you know, she still has two, three classes currently under the old curriculum and a class that graduated right in April 2017 and a class that's going to graduate in July. I don't want that focus to be removed from those students for this new curriculum and this in class in July. So I was really concerned about the current students. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I will just note, n not having anyone here to ask or clarify my questions, I'm at a loss in terms of what this particular program's intent is in terms of responding to the violations and the concerns raised by staff. I'd like to make the motion, Madam Chair. Okay, hold on for just a second. Call. Yes, please. Modify. Yes. Um, given that this school, and they used to have, if you look at the pass rates on page three, right. in 2014, they were compliant, <coughs> they, and they were graduating larger numbers. Something's happened in the past two years. Mm -hmm. Whether that is the lack of quality instruction or the caliber of student or whatever, we do need to identify what that is. But maybe perhaps one other thing, in addition to us, uh, to the board rescinding their approval for ongoing admissions, perhaps it would help if we um, required a, a, a maximum of 10 students to one instructor rather than the 15 to one. 
given what's going do you think that would help? I mean, that's that's the other option that we could do. That's true. We could add that. The other part is I don't know if they're clinical, uh, not clinical, their laboratory, um, their laboratory experiences are adequate to prepare them for clinical. That's true. Their skill, the skill no level. Evidence. Yeah, there's no evidence. Yeah. And so just kind of curious. I know our site visits are unannounced, but are but, they on the... But we could certainly, um, you know, and, and that's the one thing that sometimes we will get opposition, and programs do need to remember that we have the authority to go on either scheduled visits yeah. mm -hmm. or unannounced visits right. at any time because we're there to protect the consumer. So I, I would like to know, or I would like to see a site visit evaluation from one of our NECs because you're absolutely right, there is a dramatic drop. Um, they were doing so well that all of a sudden <laughs> it happened. And I think you're right, a smaller clinical group. But the other part then is do they have enough clinical sites to um, accept more numerous clinical groups? Mm -hmm. And do they have the sites and the faculties to support a smaller clinical group? because that will increase the number of clinical groups. And the document that was submitted does not even begin to address the questions that are coming up at this point. It um, would address the, uh, the staff, because at right now, from 1 to 15 ratio, they are at the minimum, and that's what I was trying to state. If we went to 1 to 10... But that may be what's necessary for right. students to come. And so with, without a, another attempt for contact and without someone present to even address some of the questions that we're coming up with, it's very difficult to completely understand what might be at play in this particular circumstance. And it's very unfair for us to make an assumption w without the help of someone representing this program. Before we take action, uh, is there public comment? If so, please approach. <coughs> Seeing none. Do we have a motion for a recommendation to the board? I have a motion, Madam Chair. Please. Um, I would vote to accept yes. and, excuse me, I, I move, thank you, to accept the NEC recommendation with two additional uh, recommendations. The first one is to re, uh, require a decrease in the clinical group ratio of one instructor per 10 students. The second one is to uh, have, ask, request the NECs prepare or perform a site visit, either announced or scheduled, to assess, with the purpose to assess lab theory um, capabilities and administration, um, uh, administration of records for compliance in student records so that they meet the minimum requirements to become an LVN in the state of California. And we'll assume that students will also be interviewed. Uh, that goes without saying. Yes. I'll second that motion. Do we have anything else we wish to say in terms of discussion around this? Um, to go um, one step further, um, is faculty usually and faculty and staff are also interviewed as part of the site visits? So I. I thought so, but I just wanted to make sure. Because there's got to be a reason why they've changed in the past two years, a dramatic. But I think if we can get down to the base of the problem, find out what's going on. And that said, it's unclear if they themselves recognize there's been a major change, especially when one is asking for a new class and an approval of another new curriculum without any evidence that there needs to be a change. 
because of what's happened historically in the last two years. A call for the question and Thank you. <laughs> We're going to also ask if there's public comment for this motion. Seeing none. I motion we, I move, excuse there's me. There's a motion and taking <laughs> vote. I vote that we approve the motion <coughs> and recommend it to the full board for action. Second, no, I also vote affirmative. It's very interesting when there's only two of us. <laughs> All right, our next item, Technical Technology Training Institute Vocational Nursing Program. Do we have representatives in the room? We'll be calling you to come forth as soon as we have the staff report. Please. Hi. Technology Training Institute has been brought before the Educational Committee, uh, is presented for provisional approval due to non-compliance with regulatory comp requirements. Provisional approval based upon pre-approval status is recommended. In January, I was going to give you a summary. In January 13th, in 2015, the board approved a commencement of a class for TTI of 15 students. At that time, it was delayed due to lack of the board uh, post-secondary approval having in their uh, possession. Um, I became their NEC in January. In January of 2017, I requested documents to verify enough resources, faculty, clinical facilities, library staff, and support services, physical space, skills lab, uh, to run the program because they were wanting to start up that first class. At the last board meeting, there was a student who approached someone at the board, I'm not sure who, but it was sent then to me. The student was wanting to know why, if they were already started in a VN class, they were not able to go to clinical. And then subsequently, there was another student who reached out to me. Um, he was very frustrated as well. Uh, there is a class of originally six students and now has five that has been going on two nights a week from five to 10 o'clock or so at night. Um, they're calling it a prerequisite course. If you look at the documentation, there is no prerequisite course that was approved by us nor by the Bureau. Um, there was a visit done by, the, by me, I, me, the NEC, went out uh, in February. Um, I asked for some documents, i.e. instructional plans, lesson plans, a lot of the things that have been listed, and I have not been given the current instructional plans. I do not have the lesson plans. I do not have a complete current catalog and a handbook. They sent me a handbook that had like 13 or 15 pages of a 57-page book. I still do not have all the documents I've requested. They did submit a response, which I did copy, and you have a copy of in front of you. None of the violations have been corrected by that response. I could go through that each individual if you would like me to, but I'm going to just say none of them have been cleared by that response. At this point, the program does not have adequate pediatric facilities. I called the pediatric clinic. It is an adult and a pediatric clinic, and they only see about six to 10 patients a day for pediatrics. The rest of it is adult. It's a clinic, and it's been set up as a satellite. So therefore, given the fact that there is even less pediatrics uh, clients at this site, it would be unable for the students to meet their pediatric objectives. Um, and even so, if you sent one student to this clinical site, which is allowed, it would take almost two months for the 15 students that was originally requested to make it through the pediatric rotation. They do not have adequate resources in their lab. They had one bed set up without a mannequin. There was a second bed that was a disassembled. 
They sent us a picture of one bed with one mannequin. I have no idea if they pulled out a mannequin and put it in the original bed or if that was the second bed. But either way, when I was there, there was no mannequin and there was one bed and a frame and a closet. The sink that was in a closet had some sort of substance that looked like cement in it. The, the owner uh, at that time did turn on the sink. It did work. But it was piled underneath boxes of stuff, and it had some sort of cement-type mixture on it. Uh, the director of nursing has been the same director of nursing. Unfortunately, her husband passed away in late December, and she has not been as active administrating as she originally did when the program was getting set up. Um, in May of 2016, they started this evening class I was referring to. It originally started with six students. There's currently five students. And I've given you documentation that was provided to me by the students that they were asked to sign an enrollment to a vocational nursing program. When I asked the owner upon my visit if she had documentation that the students knew that this was a prerequisite class, my response that I was given was no. They had no documentation that they could provide to me that the six students knew that this was not part of a VN class. Um, I also included a syllabus that was provided to me by a student, which includes bits and pieces of vocational nursing training. Although I do recognize they have not gone to clinical, I did call the clinical facilities to verify they have not yet been to any of the clinical sites. One of the clinical sites that's on for med surge said that they would not be opposed to having them be there, but it would be a scheduling issue at this point, and they would have to make sure that the days and times they need would be still available. My recommendation is to put them on provisional and let the school have an opportunity to fix all the violations prior to starting their first class officially. Thank you. Thank you. Would the representatives please approach? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, and if you <coughs> kindly identify yourself with the title. Um, my name is Ruby Pugh. Oh, speak directly into the mic, if you please, or okay. a little closer to you. Okay. Is that better? A little closer, or louder, <laughs> or both. <laughs> no, okay. My name is Ruby Pugh, and Perfect. I, okay, is that better? Okay. Yes. All right. And I'm the director for the program. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Concerns? Um, may, may I ask a question right quick? Yes. Yeah, you're more than welcome to make a statement. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Silverman, did you say that there were not any? Please guys? speak into the mic oh, if I, you yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because did you? those who are potentially. Okay. I'm, I'm addressing this question to Mrs. Silverman, uh, our NEC. And I, I, I do, I'm sorry, because this is a, a committee mem meeting, mm -hmm. uh, all questions are addressed to, to the board members. Yes. Okay, I guess members. I just want clarification. Uh, yes, if, did I hear Mrs. Silverman say that um, there were not any responses? To what? To the violations? I said that the responses had been copied and given to the committee members, but they did not clear off the violations. They still exist. There's 10 violations, and all 10 are still existing. Even with our responses? They didn't clarify anything, or? No, they did not clear off the violations. You still, the school still has 10 violations. Hmm. OK. No, would I just like to respond or make a statement. Well, I to us. <laughs> yes, um, I initially received the ten violations through the email. Through email, Mrs. Silverman sent them to me, and in working through each violation uh, and 
going back and forth between the regs where there's indicators. And uh, I thought we, we, that we had addressed each and whatever needed to be sent in was going to be sent in. And um, I thought we had addressed that. Particularly because well, so much paperwork, excuse me. Um, okay, should I just leave that at that? Well, okay, the other thing is that on the, the report that I received, um, on the very back, it was saying here that um, I at this. I want to make sure you're at, referring to the one dated April 18th. Let me see. The report I had received from Ms. Anderson? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Were we to acknowledge that we received the report? Okay. On our page 14, I was just kind of surprised because it said here, since the time of the complaints made by a student, an unannounced program inspection in February two, uh, 2017 identified 10 violations. At this time, none of the violations have been addressed by the director. So I thought in my responses that was addressing them. Okay. So I want to make sure we're clear on what you're asking. You are saying you believe they were addressed so that means you have received something back affirming that the, the violations have been addressed. You have some documentation saying that what you submitted was sufficient. Well, I thought it was. Okay. I, I took Help each. Help us understand what led you to believe that. OK. Uh, she suggested, Mrs. Silverman, suggested that we take each violation one at a time and address it. And I was assuming, and then whatever documents needed to be sent in, that they would be sent in. And, but um, as an example, I have, um, where's my page one? Oh, I shuffled everything around now. Um, let, let me see if I can rephrase my <laughs> question to you. You submitted something in response. In, in, in writing, yes. And you believe that that, in essence, addressed the violations. Yes, what with I'm corrections being is added. What have you received, or what evidence do you have since you made the submission that? that was sufficient that the violations have been removed? Do you have some documentation? Mm. Did you receive some phone calls, some emails, something concrete that let you know the violation had been addressed? I haven't received any communication stating yes or no, that they, they were have, addressed or they were not. Okay. They were addressed in writing here. And photos, there were a couple of photos, and um, answered the questions such as the library and what have you. And all that information was written up in the responses. And I thought that I never did hear any more after that. So I thought this was addressing the violations. And then when I received uh, Ms. Anderson's document, and the very end on page 14, it said that um, at this time, none of the 10 violations have been addressed by the director. Can I make a comment? Do you see what I'm? Yes. yes. So the visit was done February 21st. She responded April 7th, 2017. When the report was due to, for my final, I had not gone through the packet. And hence, that is why you were given the packet today, is because it came in after the report was written. I have since gone through her report of every mm -hmm. single violation, and I have a response. But what I would rather do is at some point take it offline with her and tell her what she's still missing 
to clear off the different violations. It, sure, please. One other thing, Ms. Pugh, you yes. need to remember there is a difference between your submitting um, a, a document mm -hmm. addressing violations yes. and correcting the violations. And what we're talking about is an actual correction of the violations. And that's what Ms. Silverman was saying, uh, that what was submitted has not corrected the identified violation. So that's what she's saying she will talk, she'd like to talk with you offline. Okay. Oh, I understand what you're saying, but like it is, as an example, there were a couple of photos that were added in, in here, which I think would help to uh, and, clear. And also, and excuse me, for, I didn't mean to mm -hmm. interrupt. Uh, there is an issue of timing here. Mm -hmm. When we have public meetings, we require, it's required that staff prepare their reports for us as board members mm -hmm. to review, but all the documents have to be reviewed before we can even get them. And you said it was the seventh that you sent this, mm -hmm. and I would suspect, which unfortunately does happen, it is a timing issue. And I understand that because I know that uh, she left on the, was, I believe it was the 14th, she had a, she had to travel, or she was traveling on a, she went to Hawaii from the 14th to the 24th. So we, we there was some time staff missing. We to take private time for vacation. <laughs> well, I'm not saying they don't. I'm I will, you know, <laughs> I'm not Ms. saying that Ms. she Ms. couldn't Pugh, go. I, I understand have that. Another question. Uh -huh. The issue of starting uh, students prior to the time of, of actually beginning an approved class. That, that is a major concern mm -hmm. also. Violation. And the fact that two, two of the enrolled students informed uh, board representatives that they were, they were under the assumption they were in a class, in an actual approved class, and then when the consultant went there, the school representative advised that this was a pre a, a, a preparatory class, well, a prerequisite class, but there's no prerequisite class approved there. So that, that's of concern. What can, it, you, can you address that? Yes. Um, we have been waiting for a start date. There was, we've had, what, in maybe just a little over a year, four different um, nurse education consultants. That doesn't address the issue. So it's not the consultant. I'm no, but, about the, the issue but what I'm trying to say is that the communication that had been going on, sometimes we didn't get the responses. So what we want, we have been asking for a start date an actual start date for the first LVN class. Mm -hmm. But since and the, initially the first date we had back in 15, we didn't have the students. Mm -hmm. And then we acquired students in 16, uh, in May, May 16, and 2016. And we didn't want to lose the students that we had, but we were also understanding that uh, the communication skills, writing skills, uh, critical thinking skills, and what have you, they needed to be buffed up a little bit if they wanted to appropriately acquire the knowledge and to use it and then to express it in their work. So we were having uh, classes in reference to uh, test taking, um, communication, writing skills, because most of our students are foreign students. And English, is, they speak English, some speak very well, and some is still a little broken. So to kind of get them to that point where they could actually um, absorb everything, you know, we figure, okay, we'll work on that while we wait for a start date. And that's basically what they were doing. Thank you for that explanation. Okay. But it does raise several questions. Okay. Um, one, did the students understand that that was not part of the formal program? Based on some of the interactions of students with 
some of our colleague board members, there was a concern that they didn't know it was not part of the formal program. If it is, then were those classes, those remedial or prerequisite <laughs> or preparatory classes submitted as part of the program? And then these are just questions that come up as you, you sharing mm -hmm. what is happening, what mm -hmm. has happened. And anything that is part of a program that was done that is not approved means you're running a program that's not fully approved because it is right. not the same yes. as the one that was submitted. Um, I, we, we totally are, are empathetic about ELL or the mm -hmm. limited English proficient students. Mm -hmm. uh, that does not mean they <coughs> cannot learn. It's just the issue of language. Right. Uh, however, if that is part of the program, if there is a remediation or a preparatory part of the program mm -hmm. that students are paying for and they must complete in order to complete your entire program, mm -hmm. that suggests it is part of the program package. Mm -hmm. so well, we need to know that's being offered. See, and the, the, your other problem is, in addition to all of that, the enrollment agreements that they sign mm -hmm. said it is the VN program. Yeah. That's, that's the documents that they signed. So in, in addition to there being multiple start dates in these, mm -hmm. just, they came in in different, different dates. Well, they may times. have, but it, the enrollment agreements that they signed mm -hmm. says they actually started the program. Okay, maybe I guess what we should have done was look at the wording on the form so that it would be a little, a little clearer. But um, right now there are multiple problems. That's one yes. Of them. Okay, I, I I can accept that. Um, but what I'm saying, what we wanted them to do, another thing is that if we 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 were waiting for a start date, and we told them that. Now, there's this one person who said that they called the board to find out when we were going to get a start date, which is different than what we've heard. So, um, and that there was really, quote unquote, a complaint, but then this person expressed that it wasn't a complaint. I was calling to find out when would we get a start date, because they knew that we didn't have a start date. So, um, there are certain forms that they had to sign in order to be in the building and covered by the insurance. So that's, a fa that's something else we had to factor in, that they had to complete a form so that they can uh, be covered by the insurance any if anything should happen while on the site and equipment or whatever, okay? Um, in the meantime, I guess the, the owners had discussed that if they go ahead and start anticipating that we were going to have a start date before now, you know, to this date, we still haven't, we don't have one, that if they go ahead and start paying, then as soon as we get the start date, it would just kick in. And they're already paying in advance for their class, for their program, and they'll probably be, be finished paying for it before, you know, they actually graduate. But unfortunately, we haven't had a start date. So, and, but the students, the five that are there, they don't want to leave. They want to say they want to come, and, and they, they don't want to go to another school because for whatever. But well, they liked coming to the site. They were always welcome to come to the site. And many times they'd bring and share a little dinner among themselves for the camaraderie. And um, that's what's been happening, basically. You do understand that you can't get a start date without sufficient facilities and faculty and all the other things that are required. And, and I know you understand that. I uh, yes. Okay. And you see. In the so you're saying. So you're report. saying we're still lacking in. That's what's in the report. Yes. Okay. So what that, that what we provided 
in the response, or do you need to see the actual documents? The, no, the, the actual facilities have to be approved, and we have to be able to verify the adequacy of them for the proposed enrollment. You can't get the right. state until all that's done. Okay, that's now let, let me say this, too, where it gets a little confusing. Um, according to the packet you sent, there's multiple photos in here. Continue talking to the mic, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't look at her. <laughs> I'm talking to the mic, but you know what I'm saying. Eye contact. Yeah, okay. Um, there's multiple photos in this packet, and to me, the photos um, are showing that required equipment is there. There are the computers. We have computers for the students. We have the um, medication cabinet. Which violation are you responding to? You know what? Okay, I'm going to tell you something else. Please. <laughs> the um, email that I received from Mrs. Silverman, she had violations 1, 2, 3, 4, on through 10. The pack that I received from um, Mrs. Anderson, the violations, the numbers and the violations are switched around. Okay, let me... Um, Ms. Pugh, yes. to clarify a couple okay. of things. First of all, the consultant sent you a preliminary summary of the violations. What you have... What was sent to you is the final report with all of the violations there. Perhaps the order that, of what she sent you is different. It is but different. And so they may be but, the but, viola hold on. The violations are the same. They are the violations that are spelled out in your report. Those are the things that you have to respond to. Okay. And now those are the same sections of regulations and mm -hmm. statute. Uh-huh. Okay. That serve as the basis of Ms. Silverman's I, Okay, I understand. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. But all I'm saying is that when I, oh, in my responses, my, my, let me just say, my, the written responses I did send, okay, okay, they correlated with the number of and the sequence of violations okay. that she sent to me. So I answered, okay, number one. Here's number one. Number two, here's number two. And then when I received your document and I was going through it, and I said, wait a minute. This is something, you know, I understand the same violations are there, just in a different sequence. Right. Right. So, it, so know, then I had it, to sit down and really... What of concern, and, and it, it bothers me because we've worked together for a while, mm -hmm. is that what seems to be coming out is that it's someone else's fault. It's not no, 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 no. I'm and just that, saying it just, it just took me anywhere. a little more effort to go through and, and try and okay. piece it together that's right. a, to match it. So noted. To get it matched. So okay. okay, that's all I'm So noted. And it was like, oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Nevertheless, okay. without still there, huh? <laughs> evidence mm -hmm. that the violations have been addressed yes. in accordance to the regulation, mm -hmm. the board is unable okay. to do anything other than to accept the recommendation of our staff. Okay. Without the evidence that there have been changes made, because again, as a board, this committee making recommendations to the board, we are held responsible. Mm -hmm. It's our duty to protect the safety of the public. Mm -hmm. And to ignore the violations and not have concrete evidence that they have been addressed would mean we are not fulfilling our responsibility. I know that's a tough call, and it's not always what everyone wants to hear, and, and we do understand that. Mm -hmm. But that is our role. Okay. And we have staff who work very hard 
to try to work with you to see if we can find the resolution. But ultimately, it is up to the school to address the violations and to demonstrate with evidence mm -hmm. that all of the founded violations have been corrected. Last question? Absolutely, okay. please. Okay. Please. Um, so, even, okay, I have violation one, and then I put in writing the response to the violation. What you want to see as an example, let's just say um, clinical sites or whatever, do you want to see the actual document again and, and put in there behind that violation? In response to that, that is part of the work that the staff will be doing with you. Once we know through staff that you as a school have evidenced correction, might be with documents, it might be another visit, it could be a combination plus okay. many discussions on the phone. Okay. Then we will look to staff to present this committee and the board with the findings. Okay. So I... Okay. I, I hope that helps a little <laughs> yes. bit. I, I'm and, just and, I'm just thinking at the same time while you're talking. It's right. just a different. I think it would just be a different approach to this. Or what I need to do is add a few more. Like if I say I have these facilities, one, two, three, four, whatever, whatever, and then show those documents that I have them and that they've been approved. Well, and may then, I suggest as an example? May I suggest you're working directly with the NEC because it is the staff that we will be looking to to validate corrections have mm -hmm. been made. Okay. So, so we're going to communicate assigned. and get and she's going to share more information with me because you just received our response we today. Just actually we just received it today. That's what I yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay, because I had sent, I did send it earlier, if but it would. Just for example, you you go to the website and you see that this is a public meeting and it's listed. Mm -hmm. And if you go to all the documents that are there, those have been documents that have been reviewed and approved for posting for the public. Unfortunately, the additional piece you got did not get to where it needed to be in time to even become part of the public documents. We as the board members, the committee members here, would not get it either until today. I have another question. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Pugh? I need also to let you know that even if you submitted a document and the board had, had received okay. what you submitted, that does not necessarily mean that all the violations are corrected. I understand. That does not. I understand. Okay. Now, the other thing, what's being, what the board, the, the consultants recommended and what the, the board is uh, considering is placement of the program on provisional approval. Now, that, that's really significant because officially you haven't started your first class. So that, that's really significant. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is placing you on provisional approval mm -hmm. would allow time for correction of the identified violations. But they have to be corrected. Okay. Within a set period of time. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Uh, please. Yeah. Yes. To show that they're. Ma'am. Go ahead. Please. What's I've been sitting here listening to the conversation between you, my colleagues, and the staff. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'm re, re, one of the reasons why I'm speaking up at this point is that you have so many questions that it, it it's one of the reasons why you never got a start date. If you 
had all these answers, if you, all your questions have been answered, you would have known that all the paperwork, all the sites, all the material, all the applications would have been met, would have been submitted, and you would have had your start date. But because you're having all these questions for whatever reason, misunderstanding, um, not sure, um, type of clinical sites, um, it's evident that you're, with, because you're asking all these questions, that the board is aware that your school was not ready to start a class because you have all the questions. As the director, you have to be able to answer all these questions. And the questions you're asking are appropriate before you start a class, whether it's a prerequisite or an actual VN class. But as the director, you would know all these answers before your class started so that you know how to guide your, your students and your faculty through all these channels and have these questions asked. Mm -hmm. That's why we encouraged you to talk with your assigned NEC. They are well-versed. They've been in your shoes. I know many of them, one in particular, has been exactly in the position you of running a program. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the reasons why they are a nursing education consultant is because they would know the answers so mm -hmm. that you would have a program set up, staffed, administratively, technically, curriculum developed so that when you start your program, none of these issues will have occurred. And by you asking these questions, it's very evident to me as an instructor, you weren't ready to start taking students into your um, facility, mm -hmm. into your program. And that's what, that was one of the, probably one of the key delays for not getting a start date. Um, for you to be able to, to have teaching assistants presenting theory is a gross violation of the Nurse Practice Act. You're shaking your head no, is that? That, that did not happen. Okay. It did not happen? No, it did not happen. Uh, it is in the report that wow. two of the personnel that's, that were teaching classes were registered with the board as a teaching assistant, not as full faculty. And by regulation, only faculty, not an assistant, may provide right. theory um, present presentation. But the assistant was providing, like I said, the other um, remediation type um, information to the students. But you realize that a teaching, a teaching assistant is just that, an yeah. assistant. Uh -huh. um, I understand. It, but it, either <laughs> way, it, it, it came to our attention. Mm -hmm. And by regulation, the students thought they were in a program. A teaching assistant was presenting a class. The students thought they were in a program. And it is illegal. It is against the regulation. Mm -hmm. OK. And on that premise, we were not, it was noticed by the NEC and were properly reported to us. And so this is something that you need to understand, that there are very clear rules mm -hmm. that I understand that you have questions and want to get clarification, as you should. Mm -hmm. But it's because of those questions, that incomplete preparation, that you did not get your start date. And that you're coming here with additional questions rather than answers, again, validates that you, in the guise of your school, were not prepared to take students. Okay. I hear what you're saying. We did have a start date before when we were in our first two NECs. We had a start date. But like I said, we didn't have the students at the time, so we couldn't get the program started. And then we needed, we tried to get an extension when we started to get the students. And we still haven't gotten a start date. So we were waiting for a new, the extension and for a new start date while we had the students and we didn't want to lose them. So that's when we were doing like remedial type or, I, I understand you know. So I'm just saying that that's, how things fell into place. And I will say this, for the first time, Mrs. Silverman 
we've actually have seen an NEC at our school. And um, we, we've been through four in a short period of time. I think last year we may have had two, a change. And I'm just saying that now, hopefully, we're going to have the guidance and assist, assistance that's going to help move us along. I, I understand that. Yeah. So but again, regardless of the change in NECs, you still have a lot of questions that are evident here. And again, that is of concern that you started or start a pre pre preliminary or a program mm -hmm. with questions that you are asking that should have been, answers should have been known to you had your program been fully approved and were given a start date. So the questions you're asking should have been answered before you even start accepted students in any capacity. Okay. Okay. So at this point, what we're going to go provisional or? I mean, with the corrections. We, we will be discussing what our next step okay. will be. That's why a motion, and we will see. Um, do you have a closing statement for us, or do you have a closing? Well, do you, thank you. Do you oh. have Do you have a closing statement? Well, I'm I'm glad that I was able to make it here to this meeting from Los Angeles, and um, um, I do look forward to working with Mrs. Silverman if we can get this, get everything cleared up and through. And, but I just, I just want one other comment I feel, I feel like I need to make. Please. And that's that, you know, seems like some documents or information has been repeatedly asked for over and over again, and it's been sent in. And at one point I did ask, I had to ask Mrs. Silverman, I says, well, quote unquote, don't you have our box or have our file or whatever? And she says, well, it's on a database, oh, on the computer, and she has the state computer, and, and everything is in there. I guess, like years ago, they called it microfish, you know, in the libraries where they would put everything in. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, I remember microfilm. <laughs> oh, well, I remember that term from the public libraries, <laughs> so... Um, and index cards and all that, card catalog and all that. Anyway, um, I, um, she was saying that it's in the computer. And so I, would, I was thinking, well, wait a minute, we've been sending these things in. We've been sending documents in. But I don't know, maybe they just need to be updated or whatever. True, some things do, and I understand that. But we, we were getting confused as to why are some of the uh, same documents requested over and over again. So noted. So after a while, it just gets a little, you know. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. But anyway, I, I do look forward to working with her and so that we can get through this as expediently as we can, okay? Because we, you know, we want to do the best we can for ourselves so we can impart that onto the students so that they can have a lifetime career okay. and move up. Thank you. Thank you. Colleague, board member. Yes. Committee member. Yes, ma'am. Uh, any uh, concerns, comments, or are you prepared to submit a motion? I am prepared to submit a motion. Yes, sir. Uh, Madam Chair, I move that we present to the board uh, the recommendation for provisional approval from a pre approval status for a one year period starting May 12, 2017 through May 31st, 2018 for Technology Training Institute Vocational Nursing Program and issue a certificate accordingly and endorse and support all other recommendations uh, presented or prepared by the nursing education consultant. And I'll second that motion. Um, don't think we have any further discussion. Public comment on the motion. Yes, did you wish to say something? Also, 
Uh, excuse me, but on the, in the acceptance letter of uh, the packet, Ms. Anderson, and I, had, I wrote you a letter, there were three attachments when you sent. So the, the acknowledgement. Yes, the acknowledgement. I wrote one because I, that third attachment. No, because yes, because the the third attachment in your mailing to me, it was the uh, acknowledgement was for advanced medical school of nursing. It wasn't our school, so that's why I wrote, basically wrote you. Are there any public comments relevant to the me. motion? Please approach. Please approach. We, we're being recorded, and so we ask that you speak to the microphone. My name is Sergei Ivanov. I'm a husband of uh, owner owner of the school. You're a little too close. You can speak that way without getting close to the I'm a owner. I'm a husband of uh, owner of the school, and um, I would like to express my uh, situation and uh, uh, transfer some suggestions of my. Uh, wife, who is a director, I mean, sorry, owner, and we keep the school since 2008, and we start program LVN since 2008, sorry, since 2006. Uh, if somebody don't understand my English, okay, sorry. We're fine. Yeah, We're fine. since 2006. Since this time, Four neck was changed. Everybody asked us submit these documents, uh, uh, plans, uh, uh, curriculum, and rest. We submit probably 17 times all our program. Many times, members of your organization said that. We, it's somewhere in post uh, in in uh, post room in uh, post room, in uh, uh, mail office. We don't know where is it. Submit again. We submit again. We submit again. We submit again. Finally, one neck Miss Schumann come back in our school, and we work with her very hard and got all approvals. We have four facility approvals, we have director of approvals, we have teacher approval, and we have assistant. <clears throat> Since this time, Mr. Mrs. Ziegler came. One year work, nothing happened. After this, Mr. Jeff, whatever last name, came, nothing happened. Between another couple people tried to approve us. Finally, we, Mr. Ms. Schumann, approve us. We got approval. Appro approve include our curriculum, our clinical, our teacher, uh, uh, all, all, all documentation, what you guys request. And we have to start in uh, 2015. Yes, we have to, but we have to submit all documents to Bureau for Private post and Revocation Education. We submitted. It's taken another six months for approval. When we got this approval, your start date already expired. We ask, please, just change uh, this date for another date. Exchange. Okay. And you give us a new starting date in January 2000. Uh, in January 2015. Okay, in January 2015, we start enrolled students. It's very difficult to find an enrolled stu student in area where we operate. It's rural area. And we cannot find students. We ask about, again, extension. But all our documents, which was approved, teachers, uh, 
uh, curriculum plans, lesson plan, facility was approved. Finally, in April, May, we find students. It was six students. Yes, it's good. We ask, can we start? Just uh, give a starting date. Ms. Ziegler said, no. Submit us again, clinical facility. Submit uh, documenta documentation about, about your teachers, about, uh, about your plan. Okay, we submit again. It's lost. Again, she got it. Now she said, don't submit me any more these documents because Jeff forgot his last name. Yeah. Huh? I, I don't know his last name. Jeff will take care of. Okay, Jeff take care of. Uh, submit to Miss Ziegler, and she disappeared. I don't know where is she. Okay, so we also try to keep the students because we don't want to lose them. So what we have to do with the students? All CNA, all professional, they want to stay with us, they like us, they like our program, they like our school. So we keep them. And every month we send letter, please give a starting date, please give a starting date. Finally, since May till December, okay, only one person, okay, contact us, real contact us. It was Miss Silverman. Okay, but probably she contact only because one of the students start complain. And of course, I understand him. He start complain because he wanna, he wanna find where, where is he. So Miss Miss Silverman came. Okay, she finds some violation. We submit uh, answer for her violation. After this, she ask, uh, please. Submit another, uh, uh, I have another 10 violations. Please submit this. And we did correction plan. We work day and night, day and night to correct this. Okay, we fixed sink, we brought another uh, bed, we, we bought mannequin, we bought another mannequin. Okay, and on April 9, we submit everything. We have to submit on April 7. We submit this correction plan on April 7. With all pictures, with all documents. Okay, so now nobody knows where is this corrections. My questions, what we have to do? We have to again wait another how many years? During this 15 years, okay, my grandfather died, her husband died, I probably will die because, you know, it's uh, so much stress. My, my wife, she in <clears throat> depression and cry all the time because we soon gonna be broke because it's nothing free. We pay for, for rent of this space. We pay for everything. We pay for teacher. What do you mean we don't have teacher? We have teacher and teacher approved by your organization. We have two assistant. Yes, also they uh, approved. And we have only five, stu uh, five, five students. We don't need uh, so many teachers in so many locations. We have four locations. This or four locations cover everything what need for our five, used to be six, five students. We have uh, pa pediatrician, we have uh, gynecology, uh, we have uh, delivery. We find delivery. Not, not many people find delivery. Okay, I remember Ms. Ziegler make us crazy about this delivery. Ms. Schumann said, okay, take this uh, money can, it will be your uh, delivery, uh, <coughs> 23 hours. Okay, Ms. Ziegler ask us, where did you buy this money can? We submit. How many, what's the price of this money can? We submit. Okay, give me now letter from organization who produced this money can that our teacher can teach this program on this mannequin, which is not exist in the United States. Now we have complaints of one students. We have to return money, which we not make nothing from, from, uh, from, 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 from this, and we'll return him money. But we have another five. 
And tomorrow we have to be in school and tell him, guys, you know what, let's wait another, I don't know how many months, years, whatever, okay? So what they gonna do? They will, no, we don't wanna anymore, okay? So first of all, they will go to another school, probably, which, has, which I will, will recommend tomorrow, my wife will recommend, or they will ask us return money for what we paid. Okay, so what we have to do? We have to <laughs> ask maybe Inspector General or, or somebody to help us that during 17 years we don't have approval. In your documents there is approval uh, around 90 days or how many, one year, whatever. But it's became right now very, very difficult for us. We have our answers, nobody know. We have our uh, mannequin, nobody know. Why? I don't know. So it's again and again, submit this, submit this. Miss Silverman, uh, sorry, Anderson. Yeah. So in, in Miss Anderson, I was in Miss. Yeah, in Miss Anderson, I was in your uh, cabinet uh, seven years ago. We sit down and discuss about this program. And this was everything okay. We friendly discuss. We do, she she direct us. We did. She, she she gave us new neck, and nothing happened. So today we on provision provisional of what program not started. We don't have program, okay. So now you put us on provisional provisional of what what we did wrong. No, we did nothing wrong. We didn't teach. Okay? We only submit our correctional plan, which nobody. From here, doesn't know about this. Thank you so much. You're welcome, and thank you. Maybe I was a little bit uh, emotionally destroyed because uh, it's not only me, it's me, my wife, and, and other students who in school who almost cry because we cannot give them possibility to be LVN because something wrong in, in system. Thank you. You're welcome. Other public comment? We have a motion on the floor. I'm going to call for a vote. It's either vote up or vote down. Vote for aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next agenda item. Thank you very much. We, we do encourage you to work with your NEC. I'd be happy to. Next agenda item, discussion and possible action regarding curriculum content for vocational nursing and psychiatric technician programs. Those who were in attendance at the last education committee meeting will remember that uh, we brought this document to your attention. Uh, we had approximately, actually we have a year to be responsive to the need to review curriculum, to make recommendations about updating curriculum and other program components in terms of what would be good, what is relevant as the profession and the demand for care changes. We want to make certain that all of you know there will be adequate opportunity for anyone who wishes to contribute to the discussion. There will be meetings north and south for your participation. And I just want to call on staff to give a little more detail about dates. Thank you. The Northern California subcommittee meeting has been scheduled for June 23rd from 10 to 5. Many of you have notified the staff that you would 
you are interested in participating in that process and that research, the opportunity is still there. So if you have not notified staff to this point, would you please either see one of the, our uh, nice ladies sitting here at the table or give us a call in the office. Uh, again, the February, the, excuse me, the North uh, Sacramento meeting is scheduled for Friday, June 23rd from 10 to 5. We also have scheduled a, um, a subcommittee meeting in Southern California. That will be held July 21st, which is also a Friday but that's from 1 to 5. You will be getting additional information about that. We will be emailing, forwarding um, um, an email to each individual school. We're also reaching out to clinical facilities. We're looking at utilization of the LVN, utilization of the psychiatric technician. How was it, what, how, what was it when we began? How are they being utilized now? We've got, we've received uh, a number of pieces of information and those of you who were at the prior meeting um, are aware that, because we reviewed in terms of the expected employment utilization through 2024, there's a 16% need in terms of VNs, for site techs, it's not quite as plentiful. So it's time for us to take a look at all of those issues. And that's what the committee look began in January. So again, you will receive additional information regarding those subcommittee meetings. And we would certainly uh, hope that you would be willing to participate. Thank you. And again, as uh, committee members, we really do encourage your input. You're out there as part of the front line, and we need to hear what your experiences are and help us envision what will be needed for the future of vocational nurses and psychiatric technicians. Well, we have pretty much come to nearly the end of today's agenda. I'm going to call for public comment on items not on the agenda. And then I remind you that please, if at all possible, hold your comments to three minutes. So in case there are others who would like to speak, we want to make sure they have time to. If there are public commenters, please approach and have a seat at the table. Seeing none. <laughs> It will take suggestions for future agenda items. Colleague. Thank you, Madam Chair. The only thing I'd like to ask for agenda items is a possible schedule for the um, directors' meetings, directors' forums, to be able to get an idea so the schools know when a director forum north and south can be coming so they could budget and plan for attendance. I think it's very important that we get as many of the directors out there to um, know what changes are on the horizon or what current issues are coming. And so a lot of the schools are coming with um, budget issues. Um, you know, they can't afford to travel. So if, uh, perhaps if they know in advance as far as possible to know when their um, director meetings are, we can get attendance. I know attendance has been really good, but I'm hoping with 190 or 180 schools get 100% attendance north and south so that we're all on the same sheet of paper and know what's coming on the horizon. So that's why I would ask about um, our next agenda is to be able to project those dates out so the schools can get the money, beg, borrow, or um, plan, plan accordingly. That's the only thing. Thank you. Um, we will have future dates for uh, education committee meetings. 
we will have a minimum of four each year. They will occur generally before the quarterly board meetings so that we are prepared as a committee to make recommendations to the full board. If you please go to the board's website, and all those meetings will be listed with dates, as well as the quarterly meetings. Yes. One, one other thing. I believe you, those directors in Southern California have received notice we've, that we are holding a director forum on the 25th at the Ronald Reagan building downtown. And that's in, in Los Angeles. That, that meeting was held. If we held one in San Diego. The prior information that we had received is that the people in San Diego were feeling slighted because nothing had been held in that area. Uh, for that reason, we did hold a forum in um, San Diego in conjunction with the February meeting where we met with directors. We also met with clinical facilities representatives to begin to pull together some of the information that we were talking about before. However, we still let that left a large area in LA. So for that reason, we scheduled uh, a forum on the 25th, downtown LA. Now that does not replace the August meetings that we have routinely had every year. That will still go on. That's just that there's so many things that are going on. We're attempting to keep programs up to date on all changes. So if you have not responded to the consultant for, to confirm your attendance for May 25th, please do so. The August meetings you will be getting additional information on. Thank you. Hearing, receiving no other future agenda items, I call for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I will second it. And we will adjourn. Thank you for everyone's attendance and for your comments. We appreciate you.